Today we'll be learning proof by contradiction. Today I learned about proof by contradiction, which is basically uh, when you seek to prove something is true, so you assume that the opposite is true and then show uh, that something is wrong when the opposite is true. In my math class at Columbia University, I learned proof by contradiction from Dr. Kovan Kalat. So, I'm going to show you one of the problems I solved with it. So, proof that for a Pythagorean triple, x squared plus y squared plus equals z squared, where x, y, and z are integers, what we want to prove is that x and y cannot both be odd. All right, so let's begin with our proof. So any odd integer can be expressed as 2x or 2n plus 1, where n is some integer in general, while any even integer can be expressed as 2n. So now, uh, if x is odd, x squared must be odd. If y is odd, y squared has to be odd. So z, has, uh, to be, z squared has to be even, so z has to be even. So the thing is, when we're doing proof by contradiction, we assume okay, we assume that the opposite is true, and then show where the contradiction is. So here we're assuming that both x and y are odd, and then showing a contradiction. So let's write x as 2a plus 1 and y as 2b plus 1. All right, so 2a plus 1 squared plus 2b plus 1 squared equals, well, we can express z as 2c, and a, b, and c are all integers here. So expanding, we get this plus this is equal to this. All right, so now let's bring these terms and these terms to the other side. So that gives us uh, 4c squared minus 4a squared minus 4a minus 4b squared minus 4b equals 2 because of 1 plus 1. So now that means we have 4 times c squared minus a squared minus a minus b squared minus b. And this is equal to 2. Now this has to be an integer because everything in it is an integer. c squared is an integer. a squared is an integer. a is an integer. b squared is an integer. And b is an integer. But look what happens when we divide both sides by 2. It gives us c squared minus a squared minus a minus b squared minus b, which should be an integer, equals 2 over 4, which is 1 half. But one half isn't an integer, so that means that this must be false because we have found a contradiction. So that means we have proved x and y cannot both be odd. We're going to be proving that root 2 is irrational. All right, so the thing is, this proof relies on root 2 being rational, the opposite case. And now we're going to show how that can't be true. So let's express root 2 as p over q. So I'm going to do this geometrically, actually. So let's draw an isosceles right triangle here. So where both legs uh, have length q. That means that this length is q root 2. But what is q root 2 if not p? So that means this side is p, right? Okay, so what are these two then? They both have to be 45. So now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a circular arc. Uh, I'm horrible at drawing circular arcs, apparently. Even though I just drew a 45 degree angle, 
Uh, but yeah, here's our arc, right? So that means the length of this fella is q. So now let's draw a tangent to this arc. So let's call this c. Let's call this a. Let's call this b. Let's call this d. Let's call this e. So now, what is c d e? Well, since we've drawn a tangent here, this in 90 degrees, so this has to be 45. So that means that since this is q and the whole thing is p, this side length is p minus q. And this side length is p minus q root 2. Now, here's where stuff really gets a little gimmicky. So the thing is, what is this? This is a kite, a quadrilateral. Now the thing is, these two are the same, they're both q, and these two right angles are both the same. Hence, uh, oh yeah, and since this is 45, and this is 135, and this is 45, and we can prove that it makes two right triangles with the same two angles. So, AF uh, basically cuts our kite in half. So, that means that these two sides are congruent too. This is P minus Q. Oh, okay. And this has to be P minus Q. All right, so what do we have then? Q is equal to P minus Q times root 2 plus 1. So Q over P minus Q is equal to root 2 plus 1. So root 2 is equal to Q uh, over p minus q minus 1, which is basically minus p plus q. So we got root 2 is equal to 2q minus p over p minus q. And here's the thing now. 2q minus p is less than p because we've defined that q is less than p by definition because p is q root 2. And p minus q obviously has to be less than q because p is less than 2q, because root 2 is less than 2. So that means that we've now just defined this in lowest terms, even though p over q, we already said, were the uh, lowest terms. So that means that there is no possible fraction that, can, uh, that we can use to express root 2. So that's it. Thank you everybody for watching.